Okay, so now let's record and log all my clip and scene information, as well as all my volume and mutes, sends, and other mixer automation directly into the arrangement view. This way I'll have a complete linear view of all my tracks to work with as I go back and forth between my session view and the arrangement view. Everything I want to work with in the session view is going to be recorded into the arrangement view by using the global record button located right up here at the top. So once I select that, I'm ready to go. So I want to go ahead and hit my stop button, reset everything. And uh, before we go any further, I want to do a little housekeeping here. I want to uh, close down my clip view, but I also want to expand a couple of my tracks here with a few more clips. So I'm going to go to my drum loop track on track one, go to the last clip here, clip number three. I'm just going to duplicate that a couple of times. Here we go. I'm going to do the same thing with the percussion. And I'm going to do the same thing with my lead synth. Here we go. But I'm actually going to pull this one down, click and hold, drag it down to scene number five. And uh, I think I'm good. I want to do one thing with a synth perk. I actually want to duplicate that as well and drag that one all the way down here. So let's see what these two new scenes sound like. Just as we thought. Maybe just drums, just percussion. Sounds good. Scene five. But what I'd like to do is go to, to the drum loop, track one. And on this last audio clip of my drums on scene five, I want to double click, bring up my clip view. You see my sample edit windows down here. And right above the sample view, I've got my loop brace. So I'll highlight that and I'll go to the far right and I'll actually use my bracket tool to drag my loop length to a shorter distance here. So now let's go ahead and play scene five. So now I've got more of a quick kick there. As a matter of fact, let's just call scene five quick kick. Sounds good. Then we'll go back to just our dedicated drum groove. So we'll call that drum groove. There we go. So let's go ahead and close down our detail view. And uh, one more thing I want to do is I actually want to open our returns. And there they are. Got that simple delay. Double click on my title bar here to bring up my device view down below. So I got my simple delay on return A and then on return B. I don't have anything just yet, but I actually want to bring in a reverb. So I'm going to go to my device browser, so open my main browser here, and I'll go to the first folder here it's called our device browser and you'll see audio effects I'll click open that up I'm going to scroll down go to my reverb and I'll just drag that into the B return track go down quickly to my device I'll turn that dry wet mix up just a little bit now I'm going to go over to my percussion track turn up send B we should see some activity there on the B reverb track Just a few parameters here. Let's increase the decay time. Just a couple of parameters. A couple more there. I'm going to do the same thing on my synth perk track. So I can launch that clip independently there. Free to move around and launch any clip I want. So I'll turn the Sin B up on that one as well. There we go. So I think we'll leave it at that. I'm going to close down my clip view here, close my browser up. And it's time to record some of these ideas, some of my scenes, clips, volume, panning, sends, all this information into the arrangement view. A couple more things I want to do. I want to take my scene, this last one called Quick Kick, and I actually want to start with that one. So I can click and hold and actually drag that scene and insert it right up here at the top of the list of scenes as we move down. Okay. And I think we're set to go. Let's go ahead and name this guitar track quickly, just so we can keep an eye on that one. So we'll call that Guitars, and we'll call the first clip Guitar 1, and the second clip of Guitar, Guitar 2. All right, so let's go ahead and select our Stop button to get everything reset. We'll hit our Global Record, and here we go. Let's get started. Start with a quick kick scene.
right into the chorus. Let that play through one more time. Actually, adjust some of the volume on the guitar, the synth perk as well. And now we'll go to the breakdown. Lead that right into the key change. Here we go. Turn that reverb sin two down on B, on the percussion track a little bit. Turn that guitar down just a hair. And we'll go to the drum groove. Sounded pretty good there. We'll cycle through that. A couple more bars. Go back to the chorus and wind things up. Here we go. Sounds good. Let's go put some, how about send A a little more on the lead square there. And let's go up here to our master tempo. I'm actually going to increase the tempo gradually. Show you how we can speed up the session here without affecting the pitch or quality. Everything sounds good as we take it up to 150 there. Go to my master track, go down to my master volume. Start to do a little volume there, bringing it down. I'll hit the tab key and we'll see that everything that I'm working with in the session view is being recorded globally into this session, into the arrangement view. So let's take a look at the arrangement view for a second. Not only do we have all our clips recorded, Everything we launched, everything we worked with, including our automation, including track volume automation, our reverb sends, our delay. Let's talk about our chooser windows over here. We've got our device chooser. So if I go down to percussion, for example, open this up, I've got a choice here. I'll select mixer. And then I've got the control chooser window down below. It gives me a choice of everything that pertains to that window, including a red LED to the left of reverb that says we've got some kind of automation activity there. And you can see, as we move over the middle of the arrangement here, that we do have some activity there. And remember, we can select our pencil tool and draw in automation value as well. And this goes across all the tracks, MIDI tracks, audio tracks, all the way down the linear timeline in our arrangement view. We can also go up to the top of our beat time ruler. This gives us our magnifier. I can click and hold and zoom in, move left, right to designate any area that I want to work in. So you can see all the tracks that we worked with from our guitars to our MIDI tracks, all the way to our drum loop, bass, everything has been recorded seamlessly with our global record from session view into the arrangement view. So it's also important to remember that we have automation control on our master track as well. So let me scroll down and go down to the bottom of our arrangement view. I'll open up the master view and you can see that our device chooser says mixer and down below in our control chooser says track volume with a red LED letting us know there's some activity there. And over to the right, starting around bar 50 or so, you can see that we started to do that decrease in volume as we were heading toward the end there. But you notice I have a sharp drop right there. Let me go to the above our beat time ruler here and I'll get my magnifier and zoom in. Had a sharp drop there with my mouse. So I can actually go back, highlight over this area, delete that section if I want, or I could just take my pencil tool and actually draw in some gradual decrease, a lot smoother there of a fade to the end of the song. And one more thing I want to point out on the master section as well. I'll stay in mixer and our device chooser and our control chooser below track volume is song tempo. So let me zoom out just a little bit. And if you remember, right around bar 43, we started to increase that tempo as well. So let me take my insert marker back up. I'll push play. that increase. So we can take our pencil tool, just like before, we can draw a rapid drop here. Take it back 
up. The same holds true on the volume. Back up just a little bit. And there goes that volume as well as the tempo control in our automation inside the arrangement view and live intro. And one last thing I want to point out is if you go down to our clip view, which is also available in our arrangement view, over on the left side, we've got the info view. And the info view is great because that gives us detailed information on all the different parameters that we mouse over with our cursor. So you can see I can go to our start point. You can see the information listed there in the info view. But just if I cursor over our MIDI note editor, you can see that information starts to change. So it's a great tool to have as you're working inside the arrangement view or session view and live intro. Explain all the different parameters and features that you're working with. And also at the top of our program, under the help menu, we've got what's called help view. I'll click that and over to the right side, this is our help view menu, taking you through and showing you everything that you want to work with inside live intro, page by page. I can go back, reset it. Maybe I want to work with DJing. So now we can scroll through and get by step-by-step -step instructions, tutorials on exactly how to work with these parameters inside live intro.